Well, I printed out a copy of the suggested uh, clarifying instruction. The board is going to uh, give the instruction as it was clarified um, by this board. I think it's appropriate. I think it's, um, it doesn't highlight anything in particular. So I'm going to give uh, the following clarification to the jury yesterday. You heard the testimony of Dr. Hood being read back to you. Uh, I instruct you that Dr. Hood's function did not include an opinion as to whether this was or was not an accidental death. Any testimony suggesting to the contrary should be ignored by you. Uh, that is your function uh, and your function alone as jurors is what well, I mean. You're right. I mean, the same issue that the feds had with that your instruction was geared towards the state, this instruction was geared towards the feds. It doesn't say anything about homicide in there or anything about his function as actually saying it's it's a homicide. You're basically saying just disregard everything when that's not the law, as your honor. The reason we were allowed to ask it is because your honor even put the case on record that the state is permitted to ask that question as a administrative function. So now instead of being neutral, it's a complete defense-oriented period of instruction. As for when the instruction that your honor previously just read on the record a few moments ago well, went through suggested. the actual facts of he had these five up, but then still said, you know, this is an administrative function, and that's the only purpose it was for. I mean, there was a purpose for him putting homicide on there, not just because he decided that he wanted to put homicide and then say, well, just completely disregard uh, what was on there, because he's not ruling on whether it was an accident or not. He's not, ruling, you're, you're you're not ruling as to whether it's an accident or not. He's testified that it was a homicide during the read back. Uh, there was a portion that I had stopped at, at the time of the trial where he went into the different designations. And that's why I that the curative instruction should be based on that, not based on his overall testimony about whether it was a homicide. The purpose of the curative instruction is to be curative towards the testimony, not just overall, like, oh, if he had an opinion and that this was a homicide, you completely disregard that opinion because he didn't weigh whether this could have been an accident or not. When that's not actually what occurred. So this is just distorting the context of what his testimony was when, when he was talking about homicide. But this is not distorting anything. It's not a pro-defense and it's not a pro-state. It's not even remotely pro-state. The state should never even ask him without telling him how to answer it in advance. We wouldn't be here today if this if this uh, witness did not decide to volunteer that accident was an option and that the definition of homicide is an intentional death. I mean, these are his words, and this came out from their witness. And they know that he wasn't supposed to be doing that, and so they should have talked to him in advance. They didn't, because before the jury, it needs to be fixed. Uh, the state doesn't coach its witnesses on what to say. He, he testifies to the facts and what his job entails. The instructor says I instructed that Dr. Hood's function did not include an opinion as to whether or not this was an accidental death. That is absolutely correct. There's nothing pro-defense about that or pro-state about that. Any testimony suggested to the contrary should be ignored by you. That is legally accurate. That is solely your function and your function alone. That is legally accurate. Like I said, there's nothing pro-defense or pro-state about this instruction. It's as neutral as it comes. It tells them not to consider it and to, to consider it that, that is their function. Because this was um, the courts trying to make sure that the clarification is is neutral. Um, obviously, I don't want to isolate any um, anything that would be beneficial to one side or the other. I'm trying to make a neutral curative instruction to let this jury know that essentially Dr. Hood's designation of any manner of death is an administrative function and is not something to be um, considered in their deliberations. You can say that. Um, yeah. 
He escalated the manners that, I mean, there was the, during the trial, during the readback, he indicated it was a homicide. And essentially, uh, what I'm telling the jury is that's whether it's a homicide, an accident, or a natural, all of those different designations is for the jury to decide. His, his designation of homicide has no legal weight or bearing on their deliberation. Um, the statement that uh, Dr. Hood's function did not include an opinion as to whether this was or was not um, an accident or death is a fact that the defendant didn't include uh, that uh, information. But it's also a fact that he did say it was a homicide. So. Yeah, that's kind of where I'm. Where I'm uh, I think what I'm going to say is the following. Yesterday, your testimony is not going to be read back to you. Um, Dr. Hood testified that he required for the purposes of providing final statistics data to the government to check off the manner of death. Um, Dr. Hood's selection of the manner of death was strictly for purposes of final statistics, speculation, conjecture, or guessing as to as to uh, the manner of death and role, role in your deliberations and must not be contemplated by you. I don't, I don't say homicide, I don't say accident, I'm simply telling them that um, it's their role to determine the, the manner of death from a legal perspective. Um, let me work on it a little bit more. I think the jury's here. I'm not sure. But I'm, okay, I'm going to take five minutes to. Can I just um, respond to that, please? Yeah, go ahead. Ms. So you're seeing his selection. So why are we emphasizing his selection? So his selection should be completely and totally ignored. So you're giving his selection credibility for the purposes of vital statistics. He could have selected accident, he could have selected something else. He didn't. He selected homicide. And then he explains what homicide is an intentional killing. So, you know, that's, they need to ignore. You don't tell him he made a selection and this is the reason he made the selection because that's giving his opinion credibility. But by the way, despite the fact that he made that, if he has that opinion, don't pay any attention to it. The fact of the matter is that his function was not to make a determination whether it was an accidental death. And uh, his, his, function, his function, his function, we're talking about the death certificate and what he put on the death certificate, right? And so he testified that he has to put check one of the five boxes. And what I'm informing this jury is that his selection of one of those five boxes has no force of law. It does it's not determinative of any legal issues in this case and it should not enter into the deliberations uh, on the questions before the, the jury. That's that's the reality of the situation. That's what that's what it is, is that those designations have no meaning for their purposes. So I can tell them that. I don't believe the court has to use the word that he selected homicide or that he did not select accident because then it emphasizes those two things and I think it puts back in front of this jury something that um, is not necessary. If I, if I tell them that Dr. Hood testified as to the manner of death, his designation um, has no force of law, is not a determining factor for whether any crime, if any, or whether a crime, if any, had been committed, or whether someone is guilty or not, it is up to you as fact finders to determine whether a crime has been committed. If I just leave it bland like that, I believe that's appropriate. It addresses the fact that, um, that his designation has no force of law to their determination. Um, I, I would be comfortable with that, and again, Yesterday, yesterday, you heard the testimony of Dr. Hood being read back to you. Um, Dr. Hood testified to the manner of death, period. Dr. Hood's um, testimony in that regard has no force of law, is not, determining fa not a determining factor for whether a crime, if any, has been committed or whether someone is guilty or not. It is up to you as founders of the facts to determine whether a crime has been committed, period. 
Um, I think that clarifies for them that they don't have to put any undue weight on anything that Dr. Hood said with, as to the death certificate. Um, so, RG, I'm going to ask that you kind of just read back that last part where I gave the instructions so that the council can hear it one more time. Go back a little bit, a little bit further. Yesterday, we heard Dr. Hood's testimony. Can you go back to you? Yesterday, you heard testimony of Dr. Hood being read back to you. Dr. Hood testified to the manner of death. Dr. Hood's testimony has, as to manner of death, has no force of law and is not a determining factor or whether a crime, if any, has been committed or whether someone is guilty or not. It is up to you as founders of the facts to determine whether a crime has been committed. Ms. Lord, Mr. Laffey, any issues with the court reading that to the jury? The state's I would just maintain my original position. Thank you, Ms. Wood. Um, all right, I'm going to isolate that and read that to the jury, check them in, read that to the jury, and have them return to their deliberations. Um, right. Mr. Okay. Let's, um, we'll put them in the box and then get them in the chairs. So can you, um, and I'm going to type it up real quick. Can you send it, Judge? Yeah, if you, if you can send it that way. Right, actually, yeah. said yeah. I'm comfortable with that. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. If you send that, I'll read that. I just want to make sure I'm reading the same thing I read to counsel. Mm -hmm. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. to any television, newspaper, or other account of this trial or pivot case conducted any independent research or investigation or otherwise assess the case during our evening break. I have all negative responses. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. I'm about to return you to your deliberations before I do. I did want to instruct you that yesterday you heard testimony of Dr. Hood being read back to you. Dr. Hood tes testified to the manner of death. Dr. Hood's testimony as to the manner of death has no force of law and is not a determining factor for whether a crime, if any, has been committed or whether someone is guilty um, or not guilty. It is up to you as finders of the facts to determine whether a crime has been committed. All right, with that instruction, we're going to do two things. We're going to move the television so that the jury can get into the room. Um, we'll have uh, Mr. and the court and the attorneys will wait for the next time. All right. Thank you all.